Gospel lesson today is from Mark, first chapter, the ninth through the fifteenth verses. It's found on page 47 in your Pew Bible, New Testament portion. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, and believe in the good news. Let us pray. <clears throat> our Lord and God, open our hearts and minds to the words that you give to us and to your spirit today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This could be your lucky day or not your lucky day. My, the way I do my sermons is I, I prepare them ahead of time and I record them and I listen to them on the trip from Lidditz to here. And this morning, as I was using my recorder, it wasn't there. <laughs> so, so I may not remember the sermon, or I may put together with Wednesday night's sermon, and you might get double portion. So we'll see whether it's your lucky day or unlucky day. Today is the first Sunday in Lent, and it reminds me of Christmas time. Okay, Christmas time, people are saying, are you ready for Christmas? Are you ready for Christmas? And the question now becomes, are you ready for Easter? Well, you know what? That doesn't have the same sound or feel to it. Are you ready for Easter? How, how do we get ready for Easter? Now, when I was a kid, my parents didn't go to church. They sent my sister and brother and I to church, but, but they didn't go to church. And so preparation for Easter amounted to candy, okay? Crosses, big crosses, coconut cream, chocolate-covered crosses. That was the most religious thing that we did. Then there were the chocolate-covered eggs, and then the marshmallow peeps, and the hollow chocolate bunnies, and now that was preparation, and, and that was good preparation. Now, uh, that's not exactly what Lent is about, and it's not exactly how we prepare for Easter. The scripture lesson that I read to you today, Mark says that Jesus went to the River Jordan, was baptized by John the Baptist, and immediately went out into the wilderness, into the desert, some translations say. And in the desert, in the wilderness, he was tempted for 40 days. Now, the desert or the wilderness is not what we think of, all that sand and all that heat. It's, it's a rough area. And, and the reality is that a person really cannot live for 40 days without water, so there had to be some water around or something. And exactly what happened there, we don't know. But it was a preparation. For Jesus, he was getting ready. He was getting ready for his ministry, for his mission. This experience that he had with John the Baptist was, was stupendous. He, he was baptized, this voice says, you're my son, my beloved, I am pleased with you. And then he goes to make preparations for his ministry. And, and these preparations, now Mark only tells us a few of the, the things in general. Matthew and Luke tell us about the three temptations, which we're all familiar with. And, and this is all very familiar territory for us. You all know that the 40 days of Lent are a celebration of the 40 days that Jesus spent in the wilderness. Now, the church, in its wisdom, puts them at the end of his ministry before Easter. But for Jesus, they were at the beginning of his ministry, a preparation. And for us today, I think it's important that we prepare. And unfortunately, Easter and, and Lent are just so familiar. They're just so usual. And we have these ideas and these things that happen. And I'm not sure that we really prepare anymore. Now sometimes people give up things. They give up certain foods or they give up doing certain things or, or, or others. And this is okay. But how do we really prepare? 
And I would suggest today that we must move beyond the usual, the traditions, and find a different preparation, a, a something that is personal and real. Sometimes we can become too familiar with something. And, and there are pitfalls into being too familiar with something. And, and I will share a story with you where I learned that. Years ago, I don't know, 20 years ago, a long time ago, my wife and I lived in a, in a house in Bethlehem that was a store. And it was a big house, and it had a warehouse on it. And in the back end of the warehouse, I made a little office. And went there often, and one night, I was in the office till after dark. And as I was coming back through the warehouse, to the house, to the kitchen door, it was dark, and I thought, oh, there's enough light coming in the window. I don't need to turn the light on. I'll just walk up to the kitchen door, and I'll be home. What I didn't realize was that I had forgotten to close the trap door to the cellar. <laughs> and the trap door to the cellar was right before the kitchen door. And so as I walked through the darkness, all of a sudden, I went down. Somehow managed to hold on to the trap door that was sitting up and grabbed hold of that. And what I did was I pulled that down on my wrists and trapped myself in the pit. You know that there are times and occasions when there's just nothing, no sounds that come out. Well, that was one of those times. The shock and the pain of hanging there, I couldn't get a word out. And so I don't know how long I hung there, but maybe it was long enough to, to gain a couple inches. But after a while, my feet could feel the steps. And I could go up to the next step and then I could move the door a little bit. And then, finally, to be freed. Now what I learned from that was that, first of all, always shut the door, no matter what. Okay? The second thing I learned is, don't walk through familiar territory thinking that you're so familiar with it that nothing can happen, because there are some surprises in life. Well, you know what? There are surprises in life, in our religion, in our understanding of God. We don't know everything. We don't know everything about God. Why does Mark begin with the baptism of Jesus and not begin with the birth of Jesus? Was it because he thought everybody knew it? Was he because he thought it was not important? What is he trying to tell us with Jesus? He doesn't tell us the three temptations. Matthew and Luke tell us those. Where did they come from? Who was there? Who was writing this down with Jesus in the wilderness? There are a lot of things that we don't know and understand. And I think it's important to move beyond the familiarity with singing the traditional hymns, doing the traditional things, and trying to understand what this God wants of us this God who has come to us in Jesus, who has spoken to us through the prophets, what does he want of us? How can we find something different? How can we find something meaningful? I think the important thing as we move through these 40 days of Lent is to try to move out into maybe some different territory for ourselves to try to understand how God is involved in our world today, how we are involved with God. Most people think that Jesus was tempted by the devil, a personal temptation. But no, that wasn't the case. He was tempted as to his ministry. He was tempted to just use his power to heal people, to feed people because people needed something to eat. He was, he was tempted to use his power to be spectacular so that people would say, ah, yeah. But he came to us with a message of God's love. That was his message. We need to be recipients of that message. And we need to figure out how can we prepare. Because God depends upon us today to spread that message that was first proclaimed by Jesus. Actually, it was proclaimed throughout the, the, the Old Testament as well, that, that Jesus amplified it and ex exemplified it. How can we 
minister today? How can we prepare ourselves that we are God's ministers, the proclaimers of good news, those who live that life of love in our families, in our workplace, in our church, in our community? What do we need to do? How can we prepare so that we can be the instruments of God's love? Today, as we receive the elements of communion, I think it's really good to remember what Jesus has done, but also to know that he didn't just disappear then, that somehow he is still with us, calling us to responsible living, to responsible ministry. Let us pray. Lord God, help us that we might prepare, that we might be ready for Easter and the triumphal proclamation, that we might be ready to live for you this day. Amen.